Hello there. I'm doing some of my sermon preparation for this coming Sunday, and so I've been rereading the Luke 13 reading, which has to do with the healing of the woman on the Sabbath. Uh, and I've been thinking about what I might be preaching on on Sunday. So here are some of the random thoughts. But first, I would like to read. That's Luke 13, verses 10 through 17. And please um, listen on. Close your eyes if you want to. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then, there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. This reading reminds me of several ladies that I have been in touch with throughout my life. One of them is a family member who are living the same predicament as this poor lady, uh, living bent over. And this particular woman was bent over for 18 long, long years, living a very limited life, um, not, not being able to even visually see everything that she would like, not being able to do the work that she wanted to in a regular way, and doing that for 18 years. That's a long time for some of us even a lifetime. Now, she came to the temple. She was actually on the synagogue on that Sabbath together with Jesus. And if uh, we are trying to guess where she may have been in the synagogue, the women were usually seated in the back, back of the synagogue. So somehow Jesus noticed through the whole crowd of first the men who were closer in his visual range, but then among all the women, he happened to notice this unfortunate woman who had been suffering for such a long time. And he calls her and uh, he says, woman, you are set free from your ailment. First, he proclaims that to her. And then later on, he lays his hands on her body and immediately she's able to stand up. Now imagine what kind of a, a difference that may have been for her to finally be able to stand up straight and look someone in the face instead of simply looking at their feet. And of all people to be able to look in the eye the person who healed her, perhaps not only bodily, but now also in many different ways. Her life was probably very limited. Perhaps she was not able to work like a normal, healthy person, 
but now everything changed and she is now liberated her life is now able to go in a different direction now i'm thinking now how are we limited sometimes by our bodies by the illnesses that we are experiencing but sometimes we are also limited uh, in our being, in our actions, maybe in, in a job that we have that is not giving us the freedom to be who we are. Maybe uh, we are limited within our families in many different ways. How is Jesus coming to us to liberate us, to free us, to help us stand up straight and help us realize that we are his that we are god's beautiful children that we are not cripples that we don't need to look down on ourselves but that we can enjoy our being as beautiful children of god who are made with a special purpose in mind by god so i hope you think about this I hope this passage helps you think perhaps in which ways you may feel limited and to see how Jesus Christ is showing up in your life and bringing you new direction, how he is making you upright and giving you a new lease on life. I hope that you will find that freedom and that as this woman did, that you will praise God for this new joy in your life. Blessings to you. All the best. Bye-bye.